Okay, let's practice multiplying polynomials. So polynomials, there's all types of polynomials. Uh, this one, in this particular problem, we have a binomial and we're multiplying it by a trinomial. So this uh, makes this pretty interesting. I'm just curious, how many out there think you can do this problem? Okay, put your answer in the comment section. And if you think you could do it, this problem should take you all of about 40 seconds to do. So go ahead and take a piece of paper out. Go ahead and whip up your uh, solution. Of course, I'm going to solve this here in one second or actually multiply this in one second. But let's just uh, make a quick comparison here to something that uh, a lot of you hopefully have already learned. And that is the FOIL method. So if I have the uh, something like this, x minus 5, x plus 1 times x minus 5, this is a binomial times a binomial. So here, in this situation, you can use this thing called FOIL. Okay, and a FOIL, uh, that's an excellent uh, little acronym. It stands for first, outer, inner, last. So I can go, okay, first, outer, inner, last. And then I can get my product here of these two binomials. But again, the FOIL method is only for two binomials. But what happens if I have a binomial and we multiply it by something larger like a trinomial? Okay, well, then we have to do uh, this problem, you know, in a different way. But actually, it's kind of somewhat related to the... Uh, FOIL technique. Matter of fact, the FOIL technique is kind of a reduced down way of doing what we're, how I'm going to do this problem here in just one second. So again, if you think you could do this, go ahead and pause the video and uh, whip up your solution and we can compare our answers here in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this problem. And uh, to do this problem, we have kind of two options, okay? There's two ways. Uh, both ways are um, uh, fine, okay? There's kind of a horizontal method. And then there's a vertical method of doing this problem. So hopefully this should be kind of familiar to you. I like doing problems this way, okay? But if you uh, do it this way, that's that's just fine as well, okay? So a horizontal method and a vertical method uh, to doing these problems. So um, either one will work. And by the way, when you're um, taking any kind of algebra course, all right, and when I talk about algebra, you could be in Algebra 2, you could be in pre-calculus, you could be in intermediate algebra, you could be in college algebra, you could be in Math 101 at your college. It doesn't make a difference. If you're studying algebra within that course, you're going to need to know this stuff, and you should know both of these methods. But I'm going to go ahead and use this horizontal method here to um, actually um, uh, find the product of this binomial times this trinomial. So let's go ahead and get to it. And here is the setup. Okay, now... I want to uh, kind of uh, show you how to, you know, I'm going to show you first what I'm going to do. Okay, you can see I already did the work down here, but this is the way this works. Okay, let's just kind of go back to something super simple. Let's say I had two times x plus five. All right. So how do I, how can I do this problem, or how can I simplify this? Well, I can use the distributor property. I'm going to take that two, multiply it by x. So that's two x plus. 2 times this 5, that is 10. Okay, so that is uh, a basic illustration of the distributor property. And this is kind of how my method, okay, of doing this, this horizontal method, if I had to kind of give this a name, I would call this the distributor property uh, method. I mean, the distributor property, if I had to pick one property that I love the most in math, it very well may be the distributor property. I have additional videos on the distributor property in my YouTube playlist, I believe in my uh, pre-algebra and algebra playlist, but the, distrib the distributor property is an awesome property. But uh, anyways, I like to kind of think of this as a, uh, the distributor property method. So here, uh, here's the setup. I'll show you what I'm going to do, and then I'll actually we'll go through my work here. So you start with the first term. I, I start with this binomial. Always put your smaller one over to the left and then your larger one here to the right, okay? So your larger polynomial. So you're going to start with this first one, and you're just going to kind of do the distributive property. You're going to be like, okay, this times this, this times this, this times this. And when you do that, uh, when you distribute this 2x to all of these terms, you're going to get uh, some uh, terms, or you're going to get the product of 2x 
times this times this times this. Okay, so once you're done and you can't go any further, you're like, okay, 2x was multiplied by everything. Then what you're going to do is you're going to shift, okay, to the next thing. So here, I'm going to shift to 1. I'm done with the 2x. I multiplied. Now I'm going to go ahead and shift to this next term in this binomial, which is 1. And then I'll multiply and create all those terms. And then I'm going to combine like terms. Now, this would work, all right, if... Oops, uh, let me just back up here. Uh, this, um, the reason why I'm explaining it to you this way, because what if I had a trinomial, okay, times a trinomial. So let's say I had x squared plus 7x plus 6 times this, okay? Well, I would start with this. I would go boom, 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 okay? Then I would move on. I would collect all my terms. I would write them all down. And then I would go and move over 1 to my 7x and go boom, 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 get all my terms. And then finally, I would move over to this one and do the same thing. I would go doot, doot, doot. I love making these little uh, crazy uh, uh, sound effects. Anyways, I would have a whole bunch of terms, right? And then I'm going to combine like terms at the end. So that's the whole idea behind uh, using uh, the horizontal method. I call it the distributive property method. It doesn't make a difference. You get the idea. All right, so let's go ahead and see this in action now. And I already did the work uh, in advance. So we, we're going to start with 2x, okay? And I'm going to multiply it by 3x squared. So 2x times 3x squared, 2 times 3 is 6. x times x squared is x cubed. So that's going to give me a 6x cubed. 2x times negative 5x gives me a negative 10x squared. OK, so if you don't know how to do this basic monomial multiplication, then you got to do some uh, additional review. But no sweat. Let's continue on. 2x times uh, 2 is 4x. All right. So I'm done with the 2x. So let's move over to the 1. And then you can see here 1 times all these terms is just going to be these terms. 1 times 3x squared is 3x squared. Now, notice when I did my multiplication with the 2x, my x squared term, 10x squared is right here. So when I have, this is just kind of a format thing. It's kind of a good tip for you. 1 times 3x squared is going to be what? 3x squared. Put that underneath this 10x squared. So in other words, you can line up all your x squareds right here. It's just going to make it easier to combine like terms at the end of this problem. All right, so 1 times this negative 5x is what? Negative 5x. That's right there. And then 1 times this 2 is 2. We'll just put that right there. Now, again... We're just going to simply combine like terms. So I only have one x uh, cubed uh, term. So I have 6x cubed. We want to write this in standard form, by the way. Highest to lowest power. Then I have negative x squared uh, plus uh, 3x squared. That's a negative 7x squared. Uh, 4x plus a negative 5x is negative 1x plus 2. And this is the answer. Okay, so if you got this problem right, it doesn't make a difference if you use the vertical method or use whatever other method you might have used. As long as you know how to do uh, polynomial multiplication, that's what, can't, that's what counts. So you definitely need to know how to uh, multiply polynomials. And I think, um, you know, we get so used to these little acronyms, you know, like, you know, the FOIL method and whatnot. And the FOIL method is a great technique, but really after you understand it kind of like what I call this, the distributive property method, you can... You know, just the FOIL method is just kind of a distilled down little shortcut special case for binomials times binomials. But it really all starts with uh, your understanding of the distributive property, right? Because if I have x plus 2 times x minus 5, okay, let's just start with a monomial times a, bono, uh, a binomial. So that would be x times x minus 5. Again, this is right here, clearly a case for knowing the distributive property, okay? All right, so anyways, knowing how to multiply polynomials is essential to be successful in algebra. And hopefully this little video was a good review for you, okay? And if, uh, you know, if you weren't able to get this right, but now you understand this, that's the whole point. So please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of content on my channel. Various, I try to spread it around basic math again, geometry, algebra, pre-calculus, calculus. Um, so again, I kind of try to help all of you out there, various levels of mathematics, but my best math help 
will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.